So the piano's now installed in the client's house um, and uh, we're just doing the first free tuning because it's been re-strung, obviously it's gone out of tune. It's also got a squeak on the sustaining pedal which is uh, quite serious, I don't know how that happened but we'll obviously sort that out. So we tried it without the panel on and it's not squeaking so uh, you can see a little bit of wood there. It's going to be this rubbing against the front panel, something that's never happened before. That's going to be a question of, of sanding that down a bit. To identify what that was, we put some graphite here on the pedal. And when we moved the panel, we found it was touching at that point there. So uh, that's the point that we've got to take down on the pa panel, I think, rather than on the pedal. So just rouse it out a bit there. We'll test it again by putting it back in. So we tested it and uh, problem solved. Unusual, never come across that before. So now a noiseless pedal. Um, Unusual. If you ever get noising, noisy pedals, it's much more likely to be um, graphite in some other place that needs doing, or well, several possibilities, but that's one that's never happen happened before. We're going to fine tune the piano and we're going to set the pitch according to this. It's at 5 to 5, that's about, about 3 beats sharp, 2 beats sharp. It's 5 to 3.3 normally. So that would be fine. I think that's a good pitch to start with. Uh, it should be slightly sharp. It's bound to it's bound to drop a bit. So that's that's a good pitch. So let's get going. So get the unisons in. They're pretty good. Those unisons. Octave. I'm tuning an upright right-handed, which is not the advised thing to do. Left-handed is advised. I started off wrong, but if you're starting tuning, uprights left-handed, grands right-handed goes the, the correct way. So if you look the left-handed, then that's the correct pull down. And grands is the opposite. So right hand for grands, left hand for uprights. Our tuners are encouraged to do that, but uh, it is better. I've got certain problems with my shoulder uh, over the years. I think it might be to do with that. I might be totally different, but I can recommend uh, getting starting off the right way. Now these are there's a new rest plank, new tuning pins, quite tight. And you might you can get levers that extend if you find it's too difficult. Well, I've got a, developed a technique over recent years of just just hitting it. So you could should come down on down onto it to stay to equalise the tension and then stabilise the tuning. So the C to G. I'm going to go through this really fast because I've got other tuning videos too. Too bad. Okay. You tune the fifth very slightly narrow. Uh, this isn't the standard way of tuning, as I've mentioned in another video. Now we're using uh, this machine is for, for for the viewer to look at. We're not using that to tune. I'm narrowing the fifth. Occasionally might look down to check, but normally it's tuned by ear. Before these electronic devices came, of course, we had to use tuning forks all the time. So, used to tune with tuning forks. An A, standard A for the orchestra, A440, we nearly always tune slightly sharp because the piano is going to drop down in pitch. So, it's now at A441.5. You might have noticed we haven't re-sprayed re the frame on this. It's just uh, obviously for economy's purposes, but we can re-spray the frame. But you can see where somebody tried to inject some fluid inside the tuning block before it's changed. But because we've got now new tuning block, obviously you don't. It'll be fine for the next uh, 70, 80 years. But uh, if you want, when we restring the piano, we can obviously uh, re-spray the frame as well. Uh, but uh, this one's pretty good anyway, apart from that. Now we finish the scale area from there to there. That's wider than the normal scale area, which is from there to there, but I use this extended one. Um, there's explanations in other videos of that. But now I'm going from here up to the top of the treble, and then we'll do the, the bass. Well, I think the characteristic of these older backsteins is that you get individual strings with uh, almost like it, not as pure as you'd expect. Uh, and that's typical with all backstein, uprights and grands. Um, they say that it's if you if you replace the bridge cap and you clean really clean here then you're going to get a bit less chorus effect but from my experience it doesn't make a difference we've restrung this piano uh, and there's still a chorusy effect as so it's not quite in tune but it, it's to do with each individual string because that string isn't pure so 
me that gives some of the characteristic Bechstein's very sweet sound and it's not a, not a problem having that but if there's anyone in the trade got any comments on that it'd be very useful to know but now we've got to the bass section and uh, I use the same the wedge for two individual strings it's just an economy of time really and fifth, an octave of course. I'm not looking at the meter here, it's not, it's not really relevant, it's much better to use your ears. You can check it with that. If anything the bass is going to be slightly flattened, either in tune or slightly flat. But the main thing is the fourth and the fifth. And the octaves are satisfactory. There's always a bit of inharmonicity and impurity in bass strings. So you've got to, it's always a slight com, uh, compromise. Good fourth, good fifth. And then both these strings done together, we take the wedge out, put it in there, and tune this one. Unison. And then the next one. If these are old strings, it's a good idea to bring them down first. If the piano's not been tuned for a long time, these are new strings, not likely to break. Good fourth, good fifths. Remember, if you're learning to tune, it's the setting of the pin is the most important thing. The equalisation of the, the the tension here, tension there. Slight downward movement. Hitting it hard is helpful as well, though. Don't do that too often. If you tune for the number of years I've tuned for, then you can damage your hearing. And now we tune the whole piano, uh, let's just listen to, I like to go through it in octaves. Showing any discrepancies. Listening hard to the fourths, the fifths and the octaves. And a bit of out of tuneness at the top there, which you can correct. Check the top notes with the rest of the piano. Then we can correct the unisons, or maybe that one's out a bit. So we'll just do those corrections now. So in the client's house, we fine-tuned uh, the piano, uh, sorted out the squeak on the pedal, and done some bits of our other minor regulation. Uh, and the piano is sounding really sweet. That's the adjective I use for. Bechstein Model 5. Really, uh, it's a tone that's very special. You won't get it on a new piano. And um, round the tenor area. Sings beautifully. So you might be asking yourself, is it worth restoring this piano? Because we've done a lot of work. We've done the tuning block, uh, action work. We've also done the case. And uh, so it's uh, not, not a small amount of work. Uh, but the answer is yes, it sounds sweeter than a new piano of the same, that would be the same price for the work that we've done on it. Um, and uh, certainly the cabinet is obviously a lot more special than a new piano. But for a new a piano, I would rather have this than a new piano. So if you've got a, a Vexstein Model 5, you may need the tuning block changed. Um, we can assess it for you. We assess pianos in transit as well if you want the piano moved from A to B. If you're on a Model 10, it may not need the tuning block changed. The, the, the tuning block doesn't seem to be so problematic with central heating. Uh, but uh, whatever your needs are, just, just get in touch and we'll try and help. Thank you very much for listening.